How are you guys doing tonight? Fantastic? All right. Excellent. Uh, can we take one more one time to just thank uh, Aurora and Arena, because um, we can't think of enough. They did a great job. It's been a, it's been a real pleasure seeing them really put this event together. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm really happy with the turnout. You guys did great. And uh, a fantastic speech is from our, uh, from our uh, presenters. So uh, our first health challenge is uh, confronting depression. Now, uh, in the United States, it's estimated that there's about 45 million individuals suffering from mental illness, uh, chief among them major depression. The World Health Organization projects that there's about 350 million people worldwide who are suffering from major depression. And uh, both of these numbers are expected to be, um, to largely understate the problem. That, uh, because our ability to identify and track these individuals is, uh, is, is beyond the capabilities of our current resources. Um, now the decline, or sorry, the, uh, the, the impact on overall health that depression has is it can be relatively significant. Um, when you compare it to some of the uh, leading chronic health conditions that exist today, such as uh, some forms of heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, and, uh, and asthma, depression, can have, or depression has a more significant impact on the decline in health than any of those uh, prior conditions that I mentioned. And when you add depression to any of those chronic conditions, the outcome on health is even more severe. So when, so, uh, when we think about when we think about uh, 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 sorry de when we think about depression in general, um, one of the other one of the costs that, that we associate with them are usually sort of the impact on people's health or the impact on uh, uh, healthcare spending. Um, but they but the cost of depression extends far beyond that. Uh, when we think about um, the workplace, it's estimated that in the U.S. there's about 34 billion dollars loss um, due to depression. Um, that's due to uh, increased number of sick days, um, increased short-term disability. Um, increased absenteeism and uh, reduced productivity of those afflicted by, compared to their unafflicted counterparts. Now, in addition to that, depression's unfortunate association with uh, substance abuse leads to um, even more increased costs in, in, in other social services, such as increased utilization of emergency uh, facilities, um, increased incarceration rates, and other um, elements of the legal system. So, uh, and, and perhaps the greatest cost of all is uh, suicide. Secondary to untreated uh, major depression is the 11th leading cause of death in the United States. And since many of these individuals are young and relatively healthy, this represents a large preventable uh, cause of mortality for many of the nations across the globe. So for this and many other reasons, the, uh, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, has labeled depression uh, one of his uh, key elements uh, of his landmark health care bill and stated that, that it's time for us to, to bring depression out of the shadows. Um, in addition, the World Health Organization lists uh, depression as one of, the, uh, one of the largest generators of disability worldwide and that uh, it is one of the top health care challenges of uh, facing this generation today. So when we ask our participants to confront depression, what are we asking them? We're asking them to, um, to, uh, to raise awareness regarding depression. We're asking our participants to remove the stigma associated with depression. When you have one in five American adults um, facing depression, it's about time that we can start talking about, uh, we can start talking more candidly about depression with our friends, with our family members, with our caregivers, um, and with our, uh, our providers. Um, in addition to that, we're looking for our participants to develop solutions that uh, increase the ability to screen for depression and help us to identify, identify individuals um, who might be suffering or those individuals out there who are looking to know a little bit more about uh, depression can identify the signs and symptoms if they feel like they are becoming depressed as well. Um, and lastly, we're looking for solutions that, uh, that help to support those individuals that are living with a diagnosis of depression and may or may not have access to, to uh, adequate support or treatment, treatments which may be available. So, that is our uh, Confronting Depression Challenge. Our second uh, challenge is Health Data in Action, which is near and dear to, uh, to uh, many of the hearts of the, the speakers which have come up here. Um, so when we look to the future, um, innovation is going to come from a lot of different places. It's going to be coming from uh, new medical devices to uh, better genetic characterization of patients and their illnesses. It's going to be coming from increased health information exchange to 
uh, to advancements in stem cell research. It's going to be coming from uh, uh, the microbiome uh, that was mentioned by, uh, by uh, one of our previous speakers, uh, all the way to, uh, to, uh, to uh, the uh, chemoinformatics, as mentioned by another one of our, our previous speakers. Um, so it's going to be coming from a lot of different directions. And one of the things that's, uh, that's common to, to all these areas of innovation is that they're going to be accompanied by greater amounts of data. That's coming at us at a, at a faster velocity and a greater volumes and variety than we've ever before seen in the, uh, in the, medical, uh, the medical field. So when, when we, so when we look forward, the key to providing better care to our patients in the future is going to depend on us to, to take these, these large technical sources of data and turn them into meaningful insight, which is what we're, we're essentially asking with our, with our health data in action challenge. Now, one of the things that, uh, one, of the, one of the great legacies of Steve Jobs and, and his work as Apple is that, is that one of the, thing, one of the things that, that strikes me is, is that innovation doesn't always come from invention. When you look at the uh, iPod, it wasn't the first MP3 player. Um, the iPhone wasn't the first smartphone, and the iPad certainly not the first tablet. But what Steve Jobs and his team at Apple was able to do, where they were able to open up the largely technical capabilities of these devices and make them more easy to understand and more accessible to the broader consumer public. Um, and what insightful design and an innovative marketplace has done for consumers of the world over, so can a well-executed data solution do for uh, the medical community, for hospitals that want to run more effectively and more efficiently, for providers that want to provide better care, and for patients that want a better experience in healthcare. So uh, for this reason, we have uh, developed our Health Data in Action Challenge. Our third challenge is our geolocalized health solutions challenged. Now, um, one of the things that it's important to remember as we ask our participants to engage in, in these uh, big choices, to take on large challenges, um, it's easy to forget that one of their greatest assets is an inherent understanding of the communities within, with, with, within which they live and work. Um, an understanding of the local infrastructure, um, understanding of the uh, stakeholders and available resources gives uh, many entrepreneurs a uh, inherent uh, advantage over some of the larger, exter larger external entities which would seek to, to, uh, to apply a large box approach to many local problems, or in many cases, not even, uh, not even engage on, on the in problems on the local level because they fear that the profit margins are far too small. So uh, with this in mind, we thought that it would be a great idea to, to develop some challenges which are a little bit smaller in, in scope than some of the previous challenges uh, uh, suggested. And, uh, and, and really tailor them to fit uh, many of the health challenges that are facing a lot of the, the host cities which are engaged in the hackathons. Um, our, we're calling these micro-challenges, and um, for those, who, those participants that take, place, or that take part in the geolocalized health solutions, they'll choose a micro-challenge um, and use their unique understanding of a particular community to develop an executable solution. Um, so getting to our micro-challenges, the first one is, uh, it, it has to do with data accumulation and resource allocation um, regarding sanitation needs in rural or developing nations. Our uh, second health, uh, micro challenge is, uh, is prevention of pregnancy complications for improved maternal health and reduction in newborn loss. The third micro challenge is uh, environmental change uh, or environmental or community change uh, regarding heart disease and the metabolic syndrome. And lastly, we have um, improved follow-up education or uh, prevention of admission regarding some of the ambulatory sensitive conditions, which include asthma, chronic, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, and heart failure. And those are our geolocalized health solutions challenge. So um, without further ado, we're going to move on to Stephanie, who's going to present our sexual health challenge. All right. Oh, perfect. I'm on. OK, thank you. Perfect. All right, so sexual health. Um, with Grindr, Tinder, and OkCupid, it's never been easier to find people that you have chemistry with and hook up. Um, so this topic, of course, uh, gains more importance. Just in the US alone, we have 20 million new infections of sexually transmitted disease every year. So it's a very normal problem. It affects everyone. Statistically, we all either had, have, or will have some sort of STD in our lives. So, that is a challenge, and on the other hand, 
This is a challenge Silicon Valley also recognizes as something that is not only unmentionable, but becomes more mainstream. For example, the seventh annual conference of Health 2.0 in Santa Clara had actually a dedicated breakout session. Before that, it was always in the unmentionable. So we at, uh, in the um, Hack for Big Choices, we think this is a big problem to tackle, and we dedicate something to it. So I, I talked to you a little bit about the first world. Now, if you go globally, it has an interesting other um, facet to it. So we have one million people living with HIV in the US. Not many people die of the disease of AIDS. If you look worldwide, it's 1.7 million who die yearly of the disease. So it really doesn't have to be. So what can we do here? Um, as in healthcare, the first um, one of the first is education. And we challenge teams worldwide to come up with neat ideas to educate our users through smartphones, personalize the information to them, make it relevant, make it relevant to the age, gender, and lifestyle and actual situation. But also, don't forget the feature phones, because most people in the world, they don't have a smartphone. They need to be uh, engaged with messaging and, and voice calling. And today, APIs like Trillium make that really easy. So these two education challenges we have. And then the third one, think about how sexual trans uh, STDs transmit. It's social interaction, right? So think of all the lessons learned of Facebook apps and so forth. And maybe we can think of, th think of ways to facilitate certain interactions and social interactions we have that might lead to uh, transmissions of one or the other disease. Either, so either to interaction then with other people or make the interaction with a doctor or medical facility easier. So for example, in rural areas in a third world country, maybe we can think of telemedicine solutions. All right, so with these three, we hope we can make a big impact here. Thank you very much.